ways that Hong Kong people can in fact be political. And during a visit to Hong Kong in March, under the conditions of COVID-19, I was introduced by Christian people to their involvement in the yellow circle economy. Wong Sik Kim Tai So I want to like through a, just a selection, a very small selection of artifacts of images that I have for you, aspects of this yellow circle economy that in many ways is intimately tied to political life and also harnesses certain aspects of religious life in uh, liberal Hong Kong. So first of all, the yellow circle economy is communicated to other um, people who are not yet familiar with it through lemon walls and posters. These are, again, photographs that I took while in Hong Kong in March. So conditions have changed radically uh, since July 1st of this year. But after the lockdown of COVID-19, people had a very cat and mouse sort of connection with one another and with the government. And as soon as they put up posters announcing criticism of the government, or the opportunity to be political through their economic choices, a lot of these posters would be torn down. So the marketing aspect of the yellow circle economy is very important in tuning people in to the opportunity for them to communicate, to convey their political allegiance for democracy um, through their choices of consumption. And the yellow marker um, on an app, or a yellow ribbon, um, or a yellow sign, or a yellow shirt, will all convey the idea of pro democracy. So the yellow circle economy seeks to sort of circle the wagons to create a space for consumption that sustains democracy and that excludes people who are not in favor of democracy. So the first aspect of it is, is marketing. Another important aspect of the yellow circle economy element was online shopping. Online shopping under COVID lockdown for very basic goods, non-perishables, instant noodles, hand sanitizers. Um, once certain uh, hard to find objects, uh, products were available. Um, such as these masks, and also the gear for actual protests could be purchased through particular on online retailers. And those retailers also offer gift cards for which supporters of the pro protest movements could invest money so that young people who were avoiding the streets, avoiding apprehension by the police, would also be able to make necessary purchases. So the gift cards you see are connected to online distributors, not only selling non-perishables and essential goods, but also gear specifically for protests, and those necessities that protesters themselves would need um, while in hiding. So these are all aspects of the retail side of the yellow circle economy. One other interesting part about the yellow circle economy and its retailing arm is that many of the products were also specifically not made in China. So whether they were imported from Japan or Taiwan, um, again, there is a circling of the wagons with this uh, yellow circle economy attempting to protect, attempting to sustain, attempting to also encourage consumption um, that excludes pro-administration businesses. So that's the retailing aspect. Another interesting about a yellow circle economy is the idea that with consumption, one is supporting the movement and a boycott that uh, has been very much part of 
protest movements and revolutions since the American Revolutionary War, in fact. And so, with the consumption, there is not only a kind of sponsorship of other people's consumption, there is a praising or a thanking that often happens through the act of consumption. Whether a business um, offers free food to protesters, or just communicates to its clientele the political side that it supports, um, such as this receipt for a Zeppelin hot dog that uh, encourages Hong Kong people, Hong Kong yang gayao, right? That message of support. Keep that fuel going, keep the movement going. Um, these are the messages of the yellow circle. If you're in the yellow circle, then you are supported, you are loved, you are affirmed. And um, so consumption is very much about a political expression. The last uh, image that I want to share with you, again, as an artifact, as a record of these times, uh, is actually taken from polling station information. You may recall that last July, uh, the opposition parties in Hong Kong had a primary election. And not unlike the US election right now, in which many of us are voting early and voting in huge numbers in anticipation of our presidential election next month, Hong Kong people in July participated in considerable numbers, surprisingly large numbers, in the primary elections. And yet the Hong Kong administration had expressed disapproval of many of the candidates and much of this practice of having primaries and withheld public places as polling sites. So many shops, uh, many private spaces offered themselves up as polling stations, polling stations instead. And so I have a screenshot from a site that indicates the polling stations in um, the area of Yaomate. And we have restaurants, and not large restaurants at all. <laughs> these are not large spaces. These are tiny, tiny spaces that were accommodating um, electors, uh, those who were voting. And many of them, even to this day, the images they have online communicate their politics very clearly. Um, one image that I have here for you from Mu Taiwan Noodles shows uh, a flyer still from uh, a while back, an anti-Article 23 flyer. And then another one of the photographs I have for you from Let's Jam Bistro has the post-it notes um, that have been uh, iconic in representing pro-democracy messages in Hong Kong. One last photograph uh, represents the address for Jordan Road, which is a um, Kowloon Union Church, a Presbyterian church on uh, Jordan Road, and that was also a polling site. So one of the very interesting things that I've been thinking about, it's quite different from the way that I have long thought about politics in Hong Kong, is the degree to which people's economic selves are being harnessed as a way to sustain pro-democracy ideas. My original research on Hong Kong looked at how conversion to Christianity started the ball rolling for people to become committed in civil society because they made a commitment to Christianity and to resolving any struggles, any tensions they felt with the church and through the church. I began to think more recently about how narrow the circle is in Hong Kong today to express one's politics, and yet people are using, people are harnessing their economic identities in order to continue that expression. 
So one point that I want to make about my, my presentation, about my research, that might be distinct from many other presenters, is the degree to which I, I see in capitalism, in a liberal economy, a very important way to sustain democracy. The other thing that I want to point out that might be quite different from other um, people in, in this conference is that the research that I will have to do is one that emphasizes a loss, a loss of certain possibilities in Hong Kong, a shrinking of a circle, a circle that people you know, have only recently built to be as expansive and considerable as it is right now has, um, has definitely been shrunk and will continue to shrink. So I want to end on that note um, that I'm excited to engage in the conversation, having simply introduced some of my observations and, and my sense of purpose. Thank you.